All right, let's do a garage update, or how about a garage walkthrough, rather. So we've been in this house since August of 2016. We closed, um, you know, it took about five or so months build time, and we were done in August. When we bought the house, I really liked it because of this garage, and we also have a second one-car garage that I primarily park in. My wife's car, because of the width of that thing, it's better for her to park in here. Um, now with any new home, right, you start out pretty bare. Now this builder actually did a pretty good job with it. The builder is Pulte. Um, the, the walls were all painted and just finished and painted. So that was, that was fantastic. And also we had nice baseboards on the sides. No crown molding. I'd, I'd, I'd like to do crown molding at some point, but the, the starting point was pretty good. Um, so, I don't know, that's, yeah, I, I think right when we closed on the house, I ordered the epoxy because the sale was running out. Um, I'm a big fan of garagejournal.com. There's a ton of, you know, active vendors and really good information on there. Much more so than YouTube, unfortunately. All the, all the flooring videos I saw on YouTube and I still see are all about consumer grade big box products, which I, I, I don't understand why people keep buying these Rustoleum stuff. So I originally bought Armor Epoxy, that's the company. Um, primer layer, epoxy, 100% solid epoxy, not water-based like your big box stores will sell. And then, a, and then their upgraded top coat. So I did both garages, my wife helped me, it took us four days to do it. We started with the primer. Now primer, again, on YouTube, I, I don't see any, or I've not seen any video of anybody doing any primer, which, which is odd for me. Because the primer is gonna help with moisture, and it's also gonna help prevent or reduce the epoxy getting absorbed into the concrete. All these rock solid videos, you know, these guys are complaining about the kits aren't going as far as what manufacturer claims. And you know, to the manufacturer's credit, that there are variables there. Because of that absorption rate, you know, they're probably quoting you know, like you know, ideal conditions, limited absorption, but that's a big variable. So so the epoxy or the primer layer will, will help with that absorption as well as um, any moisture that comes up from the bottom. Talking to Armor Epoxy, you know, they, they basically said that it, it's not the epoxy that yellowed, it's the top coat, despite that being their upgraded version and that has more UV inhibitors, it's still yellowed. Um, they denied my warranty claim. That was a bar. They wanted to sell me another 2,900 bucks worth of supplies to, to scuff the top coat and redo it um, and do a full flake. That was, that, that was the crux of all of this. They said the, the full flake is really there to, to prevent yellowing. Um, so after about two years of you know, slowly getting fr frustrated with it, I finally bit the bullet and just went the plastic tile route. Now again, garagejournal.com, I've been reading that site for six years now. Um, Swiss Tracks, Race Deck is probably more active than, than the two. Um, there's a lot of folks that talk about how to use their space. And then I talked to a couple of detail shops um, and no one really, you know, had any objections to it. They basically just told me the same thing. Get samples from the companies and figure out what you like best. That's the floor. Now for the, for the organization, I had a couple of these cabinets in our Maryland office, in our, office in, in our Maryland home. And I brought them down with me, so I was kind of already, I, I had some Gladiator, I was gonna keep going with Gladiator. Now for the price, I, th I think it's a pretty solid product. Um, and my, my most favorite, Gladiator and really the whole decision point of not replacing it is this one cabinet. And it's 
this. This is simple shelf. Now, what I really like is Gladiator, like two weeks ago, maybe a month ago, they came out, they, this was discontinued, you can't even get this thing anymore. But they brought it back, and more importantly, they, they brought it back in the white and silver color. I'm gonna start with the big cabinet in the corner, because I wanna put that in the other garage, and then I wanna you know, kind of piecemeal the remaining. Now I can keep the bulk of my things in here. The fibers, the quick jack pump, all my gallons on the bottom, um, polishing compounds and brushes. You know, it's really all you need and all I use for, for detailing. Um, microfibers, I really like auto fiber. Now the, the other part I liked about this builder is they encased the hot water heaters behind kind of walls. So we have one, and two water heaters for our house. And they're semi-hidden, which is nice. And same thing with the fuse panels. Now I'm hiding them behind the, the cabinet, but we have two um, full breakers, which is fantastic, because right? I've added a bunch of stuff to this garage. I'd say that the more recent addition would be the, so this is the obsessed garage kind of Cranzel wall mount. I did this back in January. If you are thinking about this, you know, be prepared to spend more on the, or at least in my case, I spent more on the construction than I did on the hard parts. Right? We had to blow open the walls. We have stringers going all the way up. I have one, two, three um, hose bibs. I have a new 20 amp outlet. Now keep in mind, my breakers are on the opposite side of the garage, so we went up in the attic and came around. We redid the sink and little backsplash thing, because it was just a, it was a, it was a builder grade, it was kind of ugly, I can show pictures of it, set up before. Um, now again, the, the downside to this is, let's see if I can show it. This stupid thing's leaking oil. You see in there? This started like last month and I haven't done anything with it. It's probably leaked a total of a, maybe a teaspoon in the past month. I'm going to do the first oil change. All right, we got the hose holder and then this is for the hose bib. Um, I had to keep it a little lower because I don't want to start interfering with, with the shelves and stuff. Wall tracks are all gladiator as well. I still have Remy's furnace here. We lost Remy this summer. That was really sad. <clears throat> um, what do you think? Remy was a 10 year old pug. Full chest and then three cabinets. These are 28 inches tall. This is just more detailing stuff. Products for days, pads, triple charger. I keep my machines in here. Um, and the quick jacks, pads. The melee that never gets used. I'm not a fan. Some stuff, pads, towels, brushes. Um, there's an infrared lamp, that little guy's up there. The MTM cannon that I never use. Ozone machine, don't use. Halogen light, don't use. And more stuff up top, I don't use. There's a little motorcycle helmet got into detailing was we rode we were always in the car care and all that stuff I mean I think that's pretty normal for you know especially side hustler detailers like myself but I sold the motorcycles when we moved from Maryland to here I was doing track days for you know, six years maybe seven years um, so I sold the track bike in Maryland I brought the R6 the street bike down so much construction and shitty traffic here. I sold that for a cruiser, you know, thinking we were gonna do mountain rides and stuff. And I don't like riding with a passenger. My wife gets dry eyes, so it was it was it was a nightmare. So I sold the, the cruiser after maybe that winter. I probably had it for like six months. I think I maybe put three thousand miles on it. So I sold the bikes, I needed something to do, I started detailing. Um, 
two years, two and a half years later, we're still going at it. 